Okay, now we're gonna um, take a, take a look at tension. Um, tension is a pulling force that arises when a rope, string, or other long, thin material resists being pulled apart without stretching significantly. So, um, tension always pulls away from the body attached to a rope or string um, towards the center. And so, if we look at a picture of that, it's kind of like in the middle here, where where you feel that, um, or you can see that tension um, being exerted. You know, in both directions, we have the equal and opposite force over here. And so when we're talking about tension, it's always away from the, the actual object. And um, yeah, as, as seen here in this, uh, you know, there's an equal and opposite force that's felt in, in the string itself. So some examples, um, you know, the with tension, you know, this is a, a well, you know, there's tension going upwards here from the bucket being pulled up. Um, you know, here's a uh, look like a wheel and axle. You know, there's tension, um, you know, fighting it on the other direction. And then you have the tension coming down here, um, you know, being pulled. And so um, as we look at different tension forces, it's important to distinguish them with a free body diagram. Pulling on a box. So we've already done some of that, you know, with uh, looking at the forces involved. Um, so we've used tension quite a bit. We're just going to continue with that and, and build on it. So common accelerating force is gravity. You know, we have objects um, or people, you know, falling uh, due to acceleration due to gravity. Um, if we look at this situation, though, um, you know, if we have a, a mass here that's connected over a wheel and axle to, uh, you know, a cart here, uh, this object is not going to fall at free fall. Um, it's connected to this object. Um, it's limited by this object in terms of its acceleration. And so that's what we're going to move to now is when we're looking at connected objects and um, you know, determining the acceleration of the system. To do that, we're going to look at the uh, situation here where um, we have a frictionless table. We have two masses, one hanging here, one, one here, and they're both connected uh, by a, a wire or rope. This one's going to be moving this way. This one's going to be moving this way. And the question is, um, how are they going to move? What's the acceleration going to be like of these two connected objects? So for our first example, what we're going to do is um, we'll take a look at two masses. Uh, mass one resting on the table, we'll call mass one here, um, and that's 10 kilograms. Mass two down here, five kilograms. And um, when we do this, we're going to set up um, something a little bit different, and this is going to look kind of strange. Uh, when we set up the coordinate axis, we're actually going to connect it like this, where this is considered the positive x, this is considered the negative x. So the, the, x, the x axis actually bends around to match the motion, similar to what we did with an incline, where you know, we set up the um, free body diagram and, and made the x axis follow the incline. Um, we can use that here to evaluate the motion along the, uh, the tension here. Um, so what we're going to want to do starting out is to draw out the free body diagram of these separately. So we can have mass one over here. Um, we can write out the different forces. We have tension. And it's being pulled this way. Uh, the, the table is applying a normal force, um, force of gravity downwards. Um, in this case, if we look at the forces in the Y for this, uh, they're balanced, right? We have the normal force plus the negative force of gravity equals zero, so those are equal to each other. Um, the only unbalanced force here is tension. Um, so if we write out the sum of the forces in the x equals ma in the x, we have the positive force of tension because it's pointing um, in the direction of the positive axis um, equals m1, so we're going to want to put what mass this is times a in the x. Now if we look at the other mass, mass 2, we can draw that out. We have the force of gravity of that one, um, the tension force going this way. And uh, if we set up the sum of the forces for this one, um, it's kind of weird because if you think about it, it's still on the x-axis here, the, the tension force is upwards. But which way is the tension force pointing? It's actually pointing in the negative x, right? So we have the negative force of tension plus positive force of gravity equals m2a, okay? And then, um, and this is acceleration the x. And so uh, what do we have common between these? 
well, we know the tension felt here is the same as the tension felt here. It's felt the same throughout, so those are the same. We also know the acceleration of the system is going to be the same, and so we know those two um, are going to be the same. But we have two unknowns, right? We don't know what the tension is. We don't know what the acceleration is. So we have um, two equations, two unknowns, and we need both of these equations to figure out what's going on. Um, so what we can do is we can take uh, this value and substitute it in here because we know that those are the same, right? We know the tension, um, the tension he felt here is the same as the tension felt here. So when we place those in there, um, we have to keep the negative. So negative m1a in the x plus, now force of gravity, that's going to be mass 2 times g. So it's important to distinguish that. And then mass 2 times a in the x. And um, now we're only known as unknown as acceleration. Uh, we can bring this to the other side. And so we have m2g equals m2a in the x plus m1a in the x. And we can divide both sides by um, you know, mass 1 plus mass 2. If we want to, we can factor out acceleration. And so acceleration is going to be m2g over m1 plus m2. And so what we have is a, a way that we can calculate um, the acceleration of the system. And when we know the acceleration of the system, we can place that value back in here and determine what the, uh, or sorry, we can place that back in here and then determine what the force of tension is. So if you want to take these values, the 10 kilograms for mass 1, the 5 kilograms for mass 2, and you have g, you can go ahead and solve for the acceleration, solve for the force of tension. So you can pause the clip, and when you're ready, you can uh, see this, the sequence of the slides um, and then see the solution. Okay. So we should get there um, by substituting 3.267 uh, meters per second squared place that in for acceleration, we should get a tension force of uh, 32.67. Okay, so um, what we're going to want to do in this one is um, set this up from scratch. Um, and in class, I'll, I'll do this where uh, right away I'll have this, uh, have you guys practice this um, from scratch, trying not to look back at the old one, try to you know come up with it and then just look back at your notes for any uh, help that you need. So go ahead and pause the clip and um, you know set up the uh, Set up the table just like we did before. You know, you can set up the variables just like you did to get the mass sitting on the table. The uh, wheel and axle here are the mass hanging down. Um, new mass two is 25 kilograms. Mass one is one kilogram. Um, this is still mass one. This is still mass two. Um, you know, set up the coordinate axis. Uh, do both free body diagrams. You know, the free body diagram here, free body diagram here. Set up the equations and then bring them together and then get your acceleration and once you know the acceleration you can bring it back and get the tension okay so uh, go ahead and try that pause the clip and um, go from there okay so let's see how you did um, we've got our uh, positive x negative x free body diagram normal force force gravity and tension force of tension force gravity over here positive force of tension equals m1a in the x um, and then over on the other side uh, negative force of tension plus the positive force of gravity equals m2a in the x um, two unknowns we know no acceleration or tension and um, so we'll uh, plug in m1 times a in the x for tension here and um, so have negative m1a plus uh, M2G equals M2A in the X. Bring it over and uh, we've got accelerations M2G over M1 plus M2. And we put our values in there. We should get at 6.62 meters per second squared. We can place that back in there. We should get a tension force of 79.46 newtons.